I'd like to call the meeting to order of the Sacramento Local Agency Formation Commission. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please read the, the roll, please? Here. Greenwood? Here. Jones? Here. Bruins? Present. Mm -hmm. Harrison? Here. Thank you. We have a quorum. Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Greenwood, would you please lead our Pledge of Allegiance? Please stand, please. Thank you, Commissioner. Madam Clerk, would you please read our Metro Cable announcement? Sure. Thank you. This meeting of the Local Agency Formation Commission is cablecast live on Metro Cable 14, the Local Government Affairs Channel on Comcast, Consolidated Communications, and AT&T UVerse. The meeting is also webcast at www.sacmetrocable.tv. Today's meeting will be repeated Saturday, February 6th at noon on Channel 14. This meeting is also closed captioned. We ask that you would please turn off any cell phones or noise-making devices. Speakership, speaker slips are located in the back and please fill them out and hand them to me if you would like to speak. Thank you. Thank you. If there's anyone here tonight who would like to speak on a matter that is not on the agenda, we ask that you provide a speaker slip to our clerk. Looks like this and they're in the back of the room if you would like to speak on something that is not on the agenda. And we do have two speaker slips here for an item later. All right, with that, let's move on to the consent calendar. And uh, Madam Clerk, I'd ask you to read the consent calendar. Okay, consent calendar, we have approved the meeting minutes of November 4th, claims dated through January 28th, monthly budget report, legislation status report, the Herald Fire Protection District status update, independent special district commissioner selection results. Uh, number seven is chair and vice chair appointments for calendar year 2016, and Commissioner Jones wanted to comment briefly on that before I read the last one. Commissioner Jones. Uh, Mr. Chair, I would like to nominate special district commissioner Ron Greenwood. Oops. I would like to uh, nominate Special District Representative, Special District Commissioner Ron Greenwood to fulfill the Vice Chair duties for 2016. Do we have a second to that motion? Commissioner Cerno second that motion. Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Opposed? Thank you, Commissioner Greenwood. Thank you all. Okay. And then for item number nine, we're going to pull that from the consent calendar because we have a couple of speakers from the audience for that. All right, with that, then do we have a motion to approve consent calendars items one through eight? eight. And I'll second, Mr. Chair. Commissioner Greenman moved, Commissioner Jones second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. All right, then let's move on to item nine. And we do have three speaker slips here. And I'd like to call the first speaker forward, and that would be Lynn Wheat on item number nine. <coughs> Lynn Wheat. <clears throat> Welcome. Good evening. I appreciate this time to be able to speak to you this evening about this item. Um, as you might be aware, along with the SOI applications that have been submitted to LAFCO, the City of Elk Grove is also going under a um, general plan update. And they've held so several uh, public forums. And the last one was on the general, um, on land use, of which I'm particularly um, 
um, wanting to explore more with the city. And um, I had requested that uh, when they had that meeting that we would be able to, as a public, be able to ask questions. And it was a very guided meeting, and an individual at my table had commented that it seemed like the, the city was really focusing on us as a public, uh, residents of Elk Grove agreeing that the city needed to grow larger and were really swaying us in that direction that we didn't get to really voice our opinions. And I agreed with her, and I'd had several questions that I wanted to ask them since the, the general plan update seems to be being prepared at the same time that these SOI applications are um, coming forth to LAFCO. So the um, questions that I had for them last night that I was unable to receive an answer um, to and, and hoping that um, LAFCO can um, ask these questions of Elk Grove, um, is this uh, general plan update also master planning the SOI area and is the EIR update going to include this area? And then if yes to both of those questions, what is the anticipated processing schedule for one and two? Because I believe that they need to be considered together. And then also in reading the document and looking through it, it says that, that with this EIR, they're going to use information from Elk Grove's previous EIR, which I question. And the other piece of it is that they're using it also as if the city has no idea of what might happen in this SOI area, where the applicant himself in the Sacramento um, Business Journal suggested that it's going to be housing and commercial. So if there's a tendency to move in this direction, I'd like to think that that, that would be an alternative that would be explored, and not that it's going to stay at the current land use in itself, but that Elk Grove and um, the developers have some plans of homes out in that particular area. Thank you. Thank you. Our next speaker then would be Ed Owen. Mr. Owen. Commissioner and Chairperson. Uh, my name is Ed Owen. Uh, I've been here before and I wanted to just give a little brief uh, overview of this project. Uh, the SOI was rejected in November 2013, and yes, the city of Elk Grove is now trying to do an env environmental impact study on properties that they had issues with in 2013. Um, I'm hoping that the commission will reject this uh, additional spending of money because the city of Elk Grove is currently in the process of preparing to raise taxes to cover some of the costs that they've uh, encountered in the past on projects and dreams. Uh, they also purchased a piece of property on a Grant Line Road for a sports complex and so that 100 acres was taken from the drainage fund, paid for out of that. So I think if they're going to do an environmental impact report, they should be prepared on the whole, every project that they have south of uh, Grant Line and, and Kremner, because it doesn't make sense to keep coming back and saying, OK, I'd like to do an environmental impact report for this section, and then come back and do one for this section because it's just going to cloud the issue. So I think it's uh, very uh, important that we, the taxpayers, fully understand what their uh, dreams are down there because we've, we've been through this too many times. And I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you. Well, we have one other speaker slip, and that would be from, uh, looks like, Elena Kirby. Welcome. Good evening, Commissioners. Uh, my name is Alenia Kirby, and I'm a 30-year resident of Elk Grove. Um, I just have one comment or request of the Commissioners that any of the public scoping meetings that are going to be held, if they would be held in Elk Grove to make it easier for our residents to attend them. Thank you so much for your consideration. Thank you. Staff, do you want to have any comment at this point? We do have your staff report, but would you like to make any comment? 
Uh, there's really no comment at this at this time. This is a standalone application, and we're treating it as such. I think we will be we are aware of the other activities that sent the general plan update and the other application in, and we do have in the schedule in your in the report to the, or your commission, we have uh, included a public scoping workshop for the notice and preparation that would be held in the, in the community of Elk Grove and others as needed. And I would only add that the sphere will look at both existing and planned uses in the area. All right. Uh, commissioners, any comments, questions of the commissioner? Uh, I, I have one. Yes, sir. Mr. Greenwood? Um, in the report that we had in our booklet and our, in our pamphlets here, uh, there's a, a housing ratio, uh, uh, they're quoting three, point, three to six point one uh, and five to one. Is that an update from before, uh, the previous uh, when the filing when they filed in thirteen? Uh, you know? I, I believe you're referring to the applicant su supplied. Right. It's not been vetted by staff. We provided that to give you a little. That little, was from their report. Right, right, a little perspective of what what they're intending to see come come out. Part of our process will be as we proceed to develop a project description that will. It, take into consideration the general plan in place, the ex existing settings, as well as the intent of the application. And if I may, one other question. question? Yes. Um, the, um, the fact that we're looking at an, an older EIR, 2013 EIR, continuing with that, I heard that mentioned by Ms. Sweet, is that um, what we're talking about doing? I thought we were going to look at a new EIR. I'm not sure what she was referencing. What we would be, re this is a brand new uh, environmental impact report for a brand new application. Okay, so we will, okay. Thank you. Yeah. And one last comment is that this, this application is fully reimbursed by the applicant. So it's their, um, we, we pay the, the money to, the, to our uh, consultant and then they reimburse us. Yeah, I saw and there's a deposit on, on uh, we have a deposit. So once we draw down that deposit, then we get more, and then, uh, but it's fully funded by the, the applicants in this case. Okay, great, thank you. Other comments from the commissioners? Yes, sir, please. Commissioner Jones. Thank you. Uh, just to clarify then, will, uh, the, will LAFCO staff be in charge of this scoping meeting? <laughs> Yes, that was the, 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 this is an application. It's a private landowner's application, no different from if somebody wanted to uh, be annexing, be annexing a, a project elsewhere in the county to a service district, a special district, or another city. Mm -hmm. the, the staff will, is going to do the independent analysis and will manage the environmental consultant. So <laughs> your commission will has, re retains ownership and, and, and editorial ownership, I should say, of any document that goes forward. Mm -hmm. And so at this point, we don't have a particular date to tell the public when this scoping meetings will occur, or? Well, we're, well, today is the, is the authorization to proceed. Mm -hmm. uh, that enables the contract to be signed. Uh, understandably, the con consultant has not done any work without a contract. So we expect to bring back to your commission a notice of preparation for consideration at your April meeting, mm -hmm. and and probably within two to three weeks of that April meeting, there would be a scoping meeting mm -hmm. in the community on the notice of preparation. Then we would go forward uh, with that with that notice of preparation, those comments. That would be uh, the the baseline for going forward with the and the project description, and then the preparation of the draft environmental document. When that draft document there is circulated for public comment, we anticipate a community meeting, a meeting, a presentation both to your commission and a community meeting in the community as well. No, I appreciate that. I just wanted to make sure that members of the public understood this process so that we are just initiating this now and right. that the NOP, the notice of preparation, is the time for the scoping meeting and discussion. Correct. Thank you, Don. Sure. The comments from the commission? If we have uh, anyone from the audience who has not spoken? I, I would like to just make a response to my comment. Do what I didn't speak clearly enough about the EIR. They're not going to be using the EIR. You could give us your name again, please, for the record. 
Lynn Wheat, they're not going to be using the 2013 EIR in its entirety. They're going to be taking some of the data from that and the MSR and incorporating that into this new EIR that they will be doing, if I read the report correctly. And that is my understanding from reading that information, and so that's why I wanted to bring that to your attention. That was where my question came from, because you mentioned that, and I thought, well, maybe you, you were talking about the entire EIR. Okay. No. And I got it. Yes, Mr. Chair. Uh, if staff could just clarify, my understanding is uh, information uh, for analysis with EIR needs to be within a, a year of preparation. Is that the general rule or a strict rule or? Well, I, I think by by sound sound planning practice, we want the most current information available. So, but, and, and also keep in mind that any documents that were done previously were for a much larger project, uh, eight, eight to 10,000 acres. <laughs> So this will be a drill down on this affected territory for both the, how, to, how the services were provided through the Municipal Service Review. There have been some service standards and changes, uh, you know, water, water d delivery, that sort of thing. Uh, there's anything that's con contemporary that wasn't thought of in the previous documents will be looked at in a th with a fresh eye. There may be some information that is, hasn't changed. There, soil types probably haven't changed. That sort of thing, in the interest of saving some, some time and money, will probably be relied on. It'll be reviewed and, and likely to be relied on fairly, fairly thoroughly. Commissioner Greenman. Um, follow up to that, because in, in your report, the staff report, it shows an estimated cost of about $229,835. That's, the, that's the, the, the not to exceed estimate for the Not to exceed work. that, which is being paid for by the applicants? By the applicant, correct. Okay, <laughs> and that uh, that will be f basically fresh information. That, that's kind of where I'm headed with that. It yes, been, okay. yes, yes. Updated to the size of, this, of the program as proposed. And, and to, and to uh, con uh, current, the av best available information. Okay. Current. Thank you. Any other comments, questions of the commission? I really have a motion to approve item nine of our consent calendar. Do we have a motion? I move we approve of night, <coughs> excuse me, item nine. We have a motion by Commissioner Bruins. We have a second. Second. Second, Commissioner Cerna. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Thank you. We need Commissioner Bruins and Commis Commissioner Cerna to oh, vote, yeah. please. Got it. Thank you. Motion passed. Motion is passed. Thank you very much. All right, let's move on to our public hearing. Item number 10. Uh, uh, Clerk, you read the item, please. Thank you. Item number 10 is City of Sacramento Beach Lake Road Reorganization. Okay, uh, this evening uh, the recommendation is for the commission to adopt our LAFCO resolution that's in your packet that would approve the uh, Beach Lake Road reorganization. Uh, that consists of the annexation of this affected territory to the city of Sacramento and also to Sacramento Regional County Sanitation District, um, as well as the detachment from uh, several districts, a uh, couple county service areas, one which is street lighting, 4C which is parks and rec, uh, 10 is for transportation services, and 11 was law enforcement, which is inactive, but it still there's a, a physical or a district that we have on the books. You would also detach it from the Elk Grove Kasumna Cemetery District and Sacramento Area Sewer District. Um, we're requesting that you waive the conducting authority hearing. There's 100% consent and no protest from any affected agency and that you authorize the executive officer to record the certificate <coughs> of completion upon the execution of a memorandum of understanding between um, the city, uh, Sacramento Regional Sanitation District, and MNH Realty. It's to provide access to the buffer lands uh, for the treatment plant. Uh, right now they're using the access road, which is a, was a public road, the Beach, Stone, uh, Beach Lake Road, um, part of it has already been abandoned, and this is a strip of land approximately 50 feet wide by 850 feet long. It's uh, right adjacent to Interstate 5 and adjacent to the city limits. Um, it was excluded from a, a previous annexation since the county of uh, Sacramento owns the property um, in fee. 
they have, uh, the city and the county have entered into a property tax exchange agreement, um, have agreed to this exchange. Uh, the city does intend to ultimately abandon this road uh, and incorporate it into what they call the Delta Shores planned unit development. Um, it's pretty straightforward. Again, we won't execute the certificate of completion or re by recording it until the uh, MOU is approved by the parties involved. The district is supposed to approve uh, the agreement on uh, February 10th, I believe. So it should be next week. I'd be happy to answer any questions. And but right now, this is pretty much a cleanup item. Do we have anyone in the audience that would like to speak to this matter? All right, commission, any comments, questions of the commission? Uh, I'll second it. Motion by Commissioner Cerna, second by Commissioner Bruins. All in favor? Aye. I'm sorry? Oh, vote. And Commissioner, oh, wonderful, thank you. Uh, motion passed, thank motion you. Motion passed, thank you. All right then, moving on to item 11. Do we have any questions or announcement? From either I the have, staff or the I commission? I have no comments. Staff, go ahead. We have no comments. We, we do anticipate with in the Cal Afco staff workshop uh, that, that conflicts with the schedule for March meeting, so we'll be canceling that. The next meeting will be in April. Sorry. The next commission meeting will be in April, correct. All right, no commission meeting in March. Any other reports or announcements? Staff, no. Commission, anyone? Any comments, final comments? All right, seeing none, we are adjourned.